Hey guys, I'm Joe from Joe with Joe. Just doing a standard episode with Chris, and we actually have a pretty fun one today because we're actually going to be playing with trains. I know, it's super exciting. As we're going through, we're playing, you know, doing, doing our thing, it's come to our attention that not many people might actually have a set, a layout, and we're doing all these do it yourself and set how to set up stuff, how to get started. Many people might not realize that it, you don't have to have a permanent layout. It could be something temporary. And so today, we're actually going to set up a few different styles and show you that it really is just as simple as finding stuff you have laying around your house, put it on the table, setting up a layout, and running your trains. So let's get started right here on a Mill Runner Western Maryland. Hop on. So today, we're going to start with just a plain four foot by two foot portable small table as you see in front of you. You can find this at any at Walmart or any box stores or any store that actually sells tables or a yard, even a yard sale might even sell your table. So we're going to throw some track on here and we'll get back to you in a minute. So how do you want to start, Joe? Um, like I said, well, it's just too simple. Um, there's no, no thing to get more complicated than that. All right, well, let's start with something, like you said, simple. Let's make... I heard, you know, I heard somebody say something about a shelf layout. Okay, let me that. show you what we can do there. This is 24 inches wide, so you don't really have, unless you're using a different scale like N scale, even with 15 degree radius curves, you're not going to be able to make a full loop on this table. But that doesn't mean you can't use it for model rare. So let's take, for instance, let's put a switching layout like you would see on a shelf layout. Okay. All right, so that's what I've got set up here. So what you got here is point A to point B. You can set this up with a few freight cars, which we'll do here in a moment, and simply switch cars around. It's a lot of fun, actually. That's yeah. one option. enough room over here we can actually stick another short leg of track here where we can get in and out of our yard fairly we'll put easily. another turn there and we'll we'll it further. okay we'll it. i'm going to use this 15 degree radius okay what we got right yep okay so there we go so what you now what we've done is we've actually utilized more of the space on the table now, we've got all this blank space here. That doesn't mean that you can't make this a permanent setup. You can set up industries, you can put buildings in, you can build like a, uh, what's happening around this area? What are these sidings servicing? Okay, there's a lot on just this short piece of paper, the short table that you can do. Yeah, but Chris, can you actually run something on this? Yeah. Well, let's do it. All right, so we got a power pack here. A little Joe on there, you're gonna be able to have fun, right? Not necessarily. If you're not planning on switching any more than a few cars at a time, which is all the more you could get in a siding, you could definitely get by with an old GP unit. I don't believe that, you have to prove that.
there you go. You got roughly four freight cars there, three cars in the caboose. And you can do this whole switching operation, move the cars around. And it's like working with a mathematical equation because you have to think how which cars you're going to pull out to where what car's going to end up where. Hmm. Almost turn that into a game. You definitely could. So before we get into more intricate design, intricate things, is there any other way we can build this layout? You could set this up any way you wanted to. Really. You wouldn't have to have this curve. You wouldn't have to have this many turnouts. You could move your turnouts around like we had it set up earlier, where it was just kind of like a, a slight curve and several switches. And you could also set up any kind of industry here. You could make it so that your switches were set up to where you could kind of crisscross. There's a lot of options, a lot of things you could do here, but you would be limited to your start point and your end point. So this would be more as like teaching kids and getting started on how, how to operate things, basically. A switching layout like this can be your layout. You don't need to have a basement empire by any means or a complete circle or a complete loop of track to be a model railroader. You could have this set up in the corner of your room just to have some place to run your trains and play around with them. Like I said, this is like a mathematical equation. It's like a game. And it's a lot of fun because it's obviously playing with trains. All right, Chris, what if I had you know, this set of table and a bunch of track, but I want a loop? How do we accomplish that? Well, like you mentioned earlier, this table is only 24 inches wide. Using a sharp turn radius, like an HO scale, like 15 inch radius curves, it's still a little too narrow. You need at least 32 inches. So let's just say that you wanted to set up your loop and you had some half inch plywood laying around. You could cut you out three short sections of plywood that are 33 inches long, give you a four foot section. Like I said, cut it in sections so you can lay it out and build it. And when you're done with it, literally just take it down. You got any scrap pieces of plywood laying around? Let's get started. All right. Keeping with the theme of a temporary setup, we've got three sections of scrap plywood from another project. We went ahead and made sure these things would be wide enough, and they're 33 inches wide. So that's going to give us enough room to, on either end of our track, to use our 15 inch radius curves.
see from what we literally just did, you can do a lot with just a little bit of space and some creativity. You can even do even more industry in the middle, you can even put more turnouts and more yard in the middle of this way. But there's a lot you can do with this. So just don't get discouraged if you don't have the space and you still want to run trains. All it takes is a table, a power source, a train, some track, and you can have just as much fun, if not arguably more, than if you have a, a, a permanent layout. So we've kept it simple, we've made it portable. It doesn't take that much space when it's up. It doesn't take that much space when it's torn down. And the best part is, you can still have loads of fun playing with trains. So I guess that's it for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe on your way out. And if you have any portable uh, train setup stories, please put them in the comment uh, section below. We'd love to read them. So until next time, I'm Chris. I'm Joe. Thank, Thank you, you for, for watching. watching. Yeah, yeah.